Two buildings have collapsed in Greater Noida near Delhi. A six-storey under construction building on top of a four-storey next to it. 18 families lived in the four-storey building in the Shah Beri village. According to reports, two dead bodies have been recovered by the National Disaster Response Force so far. Many people are feared trapped. Facing criticism over his performance at a Helsinki summit with Russian President Putin, the US President Trump said he misspoke at their joint news conference clarifying what he had earlier said. Trump stated that he meant to say he saw no reason why it was not Russia that interfered in the 2016 US election. China has welcomed the summit between Russian President Vladimir Putin and US President Donald Trump. Chinese Foreign Ministry has said that it hopes the two countries will have more dialogues. China also said that both Russia and United States are responsible for international peace and security. During his speech in Johannesburg, former U.S. President Barack Obama warned against the rise of strongman politics. Obama did not directly refer to current U.S. President Donald Trump, but his remarks come a day after Trump sided with Russian President Vladimir Putin over his own intelligence agencies on Russia's meddling in the 2016 U.S. election. Newlywed royal couple Prince Harry and Meghan visited an exhibition marking 100 years since the birth of former South African President Nelson Mandela. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex met friends and family of the anti-apartheid campaigner, including his granddaughter Zamaswazi Dlamini Mandela. An Islamabad-based cleric Maulana Fazlur Rahman Khalil, who is on U.S. terror watch list, has announced to support the Pakistan tehreek e insaf in the upcoming general election scheduled for July 25th. Khalil was placed on specially designated global terrorist list in 2014 for his alleged role in Harkatullah Mujahideen militant organization, which he reportedly founded in the past. Iran has lodged a complaint with the International Court of Justice against the United States' reimposition of sanctions. Iran has said that their goal is to hold the U.S. accountable for its unlawful reimposition of unilateral sanctions. The complaint came in response to U.S. decision to pull out of the Iran nuclear deal and reimpose sanctions on the country. Thai football team of 12 boys and their coach who were rescued from a flooded cave will be discharged from hospital today. The team is also set to hold a press conference the same day to satisfy a huge media interest in their story. The families of team members are preparing for their boys to come home and are excited to see them again after nearly a month. Thailand's top artists have worked on a painting to honour the historic rescue mission that saved 13-member football team. The painting is 13 metres long and is showcased in front of Art Bridge, Chiang Rai. The design includes all volunteers who participated in the mission and portrays the times when the boys were yet to be found, then moves to the time after the boys were located. Israeli army gave a warning to Syrian civilians who approached the Israeli-occupied Golan Heights on Tuesday. Civilians are seeking help or sanctuary from a Russian-backed Syrian government offensive. The crowd stopped some 200 meters away where they were ordered by an Israeli soldier to turn back. Tens of thousands of Syrians have thronged to the Golan in the past month fleeing violence. A woman and a boy adrift in the Mediterranean died just hours before help reached their damaged dinghy. A rescue boat operated by the Spanish charity Proactiva Open Arms went to help the three migrants stranded about 18 nautical miles off Libya's coast but found two already dead. A third person who had been left on the dinghy was found alive and pulled to safety by Open Arms personnel.
The Spanish humanitarian boat Open Arms has posted a dramatic video showing the bodies of a migrant woman and child dead at sea lying on the wreckage of a dinghy. The NGO founder Oscar Camp said the Libyan Coast Guard had rescued some 158 migrants from the deflating dinghy but left the bodies out at sea on the wreckage. Iraqi Prime Minister Heather Al Abadi has promised to work with protesters to fight corruption and said the government would improve services. Iraq has been rocked by violent protests for a week and protesters have accused the government of failing to provide basic services including electricity. Protesters have attacked government buildings, branches of political parties and powerful Shiite militias and stormed the international airport in the holy city of Najaf. A suspect in the killings of at least three people in a weakened crime spree in the Houston area has been arrested. It comes as a relief after police warned residents in and around the largest city in Texas to be on high alert. The Houston area had been on edge after three people were killed beginning on Friday. Japan and the European Union have signed a free trade deal at a summit in Tokyo. The trade deal promises to eliminate 99% of tariffs that cost businesses in the EU and Japan nearly $1.17 billion annually. The agreement will lead to the creation of one of the world's largest economic blocks, constituting roughly 30% of global gross domestic product. Facebook, Alphabet and Twitter have told a U.S. House panel that the social media companies are not discriminating against content for political reasons. Conservative Republicans in Congress have criticized social media companies for what they claim are politically motivated practices in removing some content. The companies have rejected the charge. Over to stories from India, Pakistan has submitted its second counter memorial in the International Court of Justice on the conviction of alleged Indian spy Kulbushan Jadav. Pakistan has filed a 400-page reply, which is a rejoinder to India's last reply of April 17. Jadav was sentenced to death by a Pakistani military court on charges of espionage and terrorism in April 2017, following which India moved the ICJ in May that year. India's top court has reserved its verdict on whether to decriminalize Section 377. It's a controversial provision in Indian Penal Court that makes gay sex punishable. The Apex Court has asked all the counsel who argued for and against 377 to submit written submissions by this Friday. Indian farmers in eastern Siliguri city have adopted the greenhouse technique to grow tomatoes during the rainy season. The technique which is used in Israel requires warm and fairly dry weather. The horticulture department is helping the farmers of the region. Around 10,000 tomato saplings have been planted which has resulted in good quality production. Indian government has ordered all the states to get the childcare homes run by the Mother Teresa founded Missionaries of Charity inspected immediately. This comes after recent cases of babies were allegedly sold for adoptions at a Missionaries of Charity shelter home in Jharkhand. And over to some more global stories. A 12-year-old boy, Ivelio, has been killed in the Venezuelan city of San Felix during protests. The incident happened overnight when demonstrators protesting power and water outages partially burned a small police station on Tuesday. Four officers have been detained in relation to this incident.
Williams' sister Evelyn said her brother had unwittingly encountered the protest as he ran errand for his mother. Venezuelans are finding alternatives to public transit as public buses have gradually disappeared due to scarce or prohibitively expensive tyres, motor oil, batteries and spare parts. Cargo trucks of all shapes and sizes have taken their place but most lack even basic safety protections for human cargo. US tourism in Cuba has revived in June after a month-long slump. The tourism has been bolstered by increased visits from cruise ships that have emerged as the most vibrant part of a market hurt by deteriorating relations under President Donald Trump. Sources with access to Cuban tourism industry data have said that 68,000 Americans visited the island in June, a 5% increase from a year ago. Farnborough International Air Show has become a hotspot for Airbus and Boeing to announce big orders. The air show underscored the industry's resilience to rising global trade tensions. In just the first two days of the week-long show, Airbus and Boeing have reported an estimated $55 billion in sales and commitments. The Farnborough Air Show is the biennial midsummer meetup of aviation's who's who. I don't think uh, global demand is going to uh, pull off. There will always be demand for air travel because this is the most... Amazon workers in Spain and Germany staged pickets for the second day of three-day strike. The workers are on strike over salary and working conditions coinciding with the online retailer's global sales event, Prime Day. Amazon said the Spanish Union's figures were not accurate because the majority of the employees had worked and processed clients' petitions. The first ever driverless shuttle has been debuted in New York's Times Square. The boxy electric bus bounced along a 150-yard section of Broadway near 48th Street. It's fitted with special high-tech sensors, but it has no driver at the wheel. The low-speed shuttle is designed for airports, college campuses, theme parks or downtown urban centers. A large black bear roaming a suburban neighborhood of Los Angeles stopped to cool off from the 32 degrees Celsius temperatures in a swimming pool. The Los Angeles Police Department later said the bear had been contained by animal control officials. The California Department of Fish and Wildlife estimates the state's black bear population to be between 25,000 and 30,000. Less than 10% of them are found in the area around Los Angeles. The man who holds more Guinness World Records than anyone, Ashrita Furman, has proved once again he is a cut above his nearest competition. Furman has set a new record for slicing the most watermelons in half on his own stomach in one minute. With a team of helpers surrounding him and handing him the melons, Furman sliced through 26 of the goats in one minute. Tour boats offering a close-up look at lava pouring from Hawaii's Kilauea volcano into the Pacific Ocean return to the waters off the Big Island on Tuesday. It happens a day after 23 passengers were injured by ash and molten rock. The accident prompted the U.S. Coast Guard to require boat captains to stay at least 300 meters from lava flowing from fissures in the volcanic flank.
to football now. A tube station in North London has been renamed for 48 hours in honour of England football manager Gareth Southgate. The three Lions finished fourth in the recently concluded FIFA World Cup at Russia, their best finish since 1990. Eight-time Olympic sprinting champion Usain Bolt remains keen to pursue a footballing career. The Jamaican, who retired in 2017, is in talks with Australian club Central Coast Mariners over a six-week trial period. Bolt, who is a Manchester United fan, has had trials with German club Borussia Dortmund and Norwegian side Stromgodset. A multi-million dollar deal is being discussed as fee for a season if the trial is successful. The best in-world golf have assembled in Canasty, Scotland for the third golfing major of the year. The British Open defending champion Jordan Spieth is hoping for a turnaround in fortunes after missing cuts in three of seven tournaments since coming third at the Augusta Masters in April. The tournament also gives Europe's best the chance to end the American domination with all four majors currently held by Americans. UK royal family's Meghan Markle's father, Thomas Markle, while talking about Meghan's life after marriage, said, My thing about my daughter right now is that I think she is terrified. She's under too much pressure. I've seen her smile for years. I know her smile. I don't like the one I'm seeing now. This is a pained smile, he added.